All right, well, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Nora, I'm with Travel Leaders and I'm gonna introduce today Kelly Mills who's joining us from Hurtigruten. And she's gonna be telling us about brand new destination for expedition cruising and that is West Africa. She told us a little bit about it earlier this week. I'm very excited. I really don't know a lot about this area of the world. And this is the first time I've ever seen a cruise in this area of the world. So I'm going to turn it over to Kelly. And if anyone has any questions, you know, put them in the Q&A or the chat and I'll monitor the, those for Kelly. Thank you. So welcome, everybody. Um, I'm here with Travel Leaders, but I am here on behalf of Hurtigruten Expeditions. And we wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about what it's like to go on an expedition cruise through West Africa. And just to get us started, um, just a little tiny piece of background on expedition cruising. I know that this is a big new word that's been kind of tossed around a lot lately. You hear about it all over and everybody's talking about it. And just to give you kind of a little bit of a background, when we say expedition cruising, it's really about experiencing nature on nature's own terms. So it's not so much about a physical ability or, you know, being so extreme that, you know, it's an unreachable way of travel, but it's really about going to some of these places where it's super remote regions of the world. They're rarely visited, but some of them might even be in your own backyard. So meaning you might have an expedition to an area that you could do an expedition through California where you're going to some of these smaller national parks and doing different things than the normal, typical, you know, regular cruise would be doing. So kind of a little bit about education, you know, having a flexible schedule, knowing that you're traveling with an open mind because you're going to be having new experiences. You're going to be going to see places that you never thought you'd been. So definitely a really good opportunity to do. And for us, to give you a very quick background before I jump right into West Africa, we've been at this for over 125 years. We've been the polar pioneers. We pretty much created the expeditions back in 1897 when we did our first expedition up to Svalbard where the polar bears live. So the company's been in business, really just one of the bigger opportunities and bigger companies that focus just on expedition travel. And you're really going to have, you know, smaller ships. These are purpose built for exploration where the larger ships don't go. And it's a great opportunity to travel with an operator who's really taking sustainability very seriously. So in the expedition world, we are going to some destinations that are not well-traveled, but they still see the effects of you know the world having not been sustainable for so long. So we participate in things like Clean Up Svalbard, like Adventure Green Alaska. You know, we offered the world's first hybrid powered ships, which launched in 2018 and 19. And you know, we're so excited to see other operators following suit and to always make sure that we are putting our you know sustainability forefront forward. You can learn all about that if you contact your travel agent and they can give you even more information about what we're out there doing. But that's kind of a little history on us jumping into our destination at hand. So we really are super excited about launching this itinerary. So in West Africa, we are doing Cape Verde. We're doing the Visagos Islands. I'll run through a little bit of information on what our itineraries are like and what we're doing there. Absolutely stunning places to visit. Very diverse ecosystems. You're having a fascinating time going in to see wildlife. You know, you're having these rare opportunities like the saltwater hippo who is in the Visagos Islands during the time we're going. So you have the opportunity to possibly see them in their natural habitat, but also to have a nice blend of not only just the wildlife, but your cultural experiences and what influences and beliefs have happened and have created these destinations year over year. So it's a really nice opportunity to see an area not as traveled. And, you know, in the past, there have been operators that have went right now. 
we seem to be one of you that go there. So when you're looking at what you have to do, you have a range of different onshore exploration activities to do, but you also have the expedition team with their expertise in their fields that are going to be traveling with you. And this expedition team is going to be there every step of the way, whether it's helping you in and out of the small boats, whether it is giving lecture series on board and talking about the destinations and giving you that history and education and background that you need when getting off and exploring. So they are there, you know, every step of the way and they're great to have because it really will enhance your experience. So when looking at West Africa, these are the areas we're gonna be going to. So I'm gonna kind of give you a starting point, which is in Senegal. We are going to be starting in Dakar and there are the opportunity to fly into Dakar. There's a couple of different lines or, or airlines that offer a nonstop out of JFK. So from the Midwest, you can just jump right into that nonstop with a short connection and your travel agents over there, travel leaders can make sure they get you all booked up on everything you need to get there. Once there, that's where we take over. So you'll arrive into Dakar, everybody will get a chance to go to Gore Island, and I'll tell you a little bit about that as well. You're going to be hitting multiple countries of West Africa. So you are going to be hitting Gambia, you're going to be hitting Guinea-Bissau, you're going to be in the Bissagos Islands, you're going to be hitting Cape Verde. So a good opportunity to see multiple countries. And as you can see from the left, that's the map of Cape Verde, the islands, and you have four islands that we'll be touching on. So you'll be going to Boa Vista, you'll be going to Santiago, you'll be going to Fogo Island, and you'll be going to Santa Antao Island. And then on top of it, in the Basagos Islands, we'll be making a stop in Oringo National Park and in Banjul. So you'll have a lot of different stops to make all along the way and a little bit about what we'll be doing. So everybody has that included overnight in Dakar where you're going to get a chance to see Gori Island, but we do also offer optional pre-cruise excursions. So you can come in a day early if you wanted to do the Bandia Nature Preserve and have an opportunity to go through kind of like a smaller version of a safari. And then when you get to Dakar, your pre-stay for that night is lunch and overnight at the Pullman Hotel. They transfer to and from the port and a full day guided tour with lunch to Gore Island. Now, Gore Island is the place in West Africa that is very well known for being part of the original slave houses and slave trade. Multiple US presidents have stopped here. There, it's not as widely stopped, at, but it is an attraction, I wouldn't call it an attraction, but it is a stop that has so much history and culture and information on how everything went. It really is a emotional trip. And in addition to, you know, a historical cultural trip. Then we have a few different multiple itineraries that everybody will be choosing from. So we have a 14 day, which will be, you know, starting and ending in Dakar. And those are four different departures in the way you're looking at it on your screen. You leave from Dakar and head into Santiago, Fogo, San Antonio, Boa Vista, down to the Bisagos and Banjul and back. And here is the Christmas expedition, which does just reverse the portion of your itinerary. So you'll be heading into Santiago, then Boa Vista, then Santo Antonio and Fogo and the Bisagos and Banjul and back. So it's just a reverse of the same itinerary. And then we have the 18 day, which does the exact itinerary, but at the end you can take the ship up and end in the Canary Islands. So if you're stopping in Grand Canaria, there is an opportunity for, you know, your rainforesty type atmosphere. And we also offer a post program there. So you are able to participate in that should you choose to. And that is where they will pick you up from the pier. You'll have a half day excursion for Las Palmas and the Bandama Crater. And then you'll have the Columbus House Museum, the local market, a Bodega San Juan and a wine tasting. And then you will end at the Occidental Hotel Las Palmas for one night. You'll have breakfast and then off you go to return home. So really a lot of opportunities if you wanted to add on for a pre and post. And then on your screen, 
I just took a snapshot of our itinerary flyer, what we usually would give out if we were standing here at a show and talking to you in person. But for this person, you can actually see a little bit more detail. If you want a copy of the PDF of this flyer, you absolutely can contact your agent and we can make sure that your travel advisor can get this over to you so you can have it in more detail to keep. But as you can see, after you do your overnight tour, you are going to have on day two where you are boarding the ship. Then day three is at sea. And then day four, five, six, and seven are your four stops in Cape Verde at the different islands. Each one will be significantly different than the last. So there is different atmospheres, different cultural experiences and different things to see on each one whether it is, you know, flat and barren and desert-like, or you can have, you know, the volcanic area. So you're going to have definitely a lot of different opportunities. Then you will be one day at sea. And then days nine through 12, we have our stops in the Basagos Islands. Here is where your expedition flexibility comes into key, because as you can see, it's not quite as regimented as to what days you're stopping where, because you're going to have so many different opportunities and landing sites that the expedition team will brief you the night before as to exactly where you're stopping and which day you're doing what the next day. So it's just that open mind and flexibility that brings that expedition feel but there are over 500 different kinds of birds. There are several species of sea turtle. You have, of course, the saltwater hippos, which are throughout the waters there. And to me, it's kind of like your safari at sea. So you're gonna be really having an opportunity to make sure you're stopping in locations that we can safely land, and also that are gonna be really beneficial for you to have that opportunity. So throughout that entire area, the uh, Basagos is actually ruled by women. It's a population of about 33,000. So you will get an opportunity, you know, not only for the Biosphere Reserve, but to go on and learn a little bit more about how the people live there and what they do. Then once you leave there, you are going to go into Benjul and it is the island capital of the Gambia. It's almost completely surrounded by mangroves and it really does give that old town feel. You'll be able to go in to go and to see the National Museum there. And then day four, we end in Dakar. And that is where you will be, you know, disembarking the ship and your choice on whether to go ahead and add on extra days if you're going to be doing something different. And you'll have lunch and then you'll make your decision as to where you'll go from there. The last sailing of the season, you're able to take that four day extra stretch and end in Grand Canaria that I was talking about. And then those are kind of our itinerary choices. Different activities to do while on board. You'll be visiting local communities. You'll be going on to small town and city tours. You'll have the landings with the small boats. I have to throw the saltwater hippo in everything because I absolutely love them. And you also will have the opportunity to participate in kayaking or different activities that are coming right off the ship. So there is quite a bit to do. And I always like to bring up the term landings because I do tend to say that all the time. And sometimes you're sitting there going, what does a landing mean? A landing is when we're going into areas that are really difficult to reach places. So they're not a typical cruise stop where you're pulling alongside and you're hopping on and off the ship. Landings are where you're going to be using water level access to board our rib boats, which are our rubber inflatable boats, the smaller boats. And we're gonna bring you on and off shore from there. And we have the custom built landing crafts that do that. So if you ever have questions on those landing crafts and what it looks like to land, please let us know. We're always able to show, you know, videos of what it looks like and your travel advisor can get more info for you that way. Your wildlife is always going to be really one of the top areas of, you know, focus for us. We absolutely love to be able to, you know, talk about them, give lectures on what they do there. And then of course, go see them in person in their natural habitat. We do have guidelines. We don't ever try to get too close to them, but we will be close enough that you can use your, you know, photography equipment, you can take pictures, but we will never put the wildlife in jeopardy. 
So we always make sure we are doing everything safely to travel and make sure we are not interrupting their way of life. And of course, visiting the local communities, seeing how everyone locally lives and what their culture and history is about. It's just such an amazing destination. And there are so many opportunities to really learn and participate and just completely get engaged with your surroundings. The town and city tours, we may have days where you might be able to experience going into the local markets. If you're looking to buy things from the local communities, we do try to support all of the communities we visit. So if there's an opportunity where you might be able to meet local artisans and buy handmade crafts, we will always try to make sure that we give you those opportunities when you're traveling with us, because sometimes you're just really looking for something more authentic and not something that feels like you purchased you know, a souvenir. A couple of just different small housekeeping items. We are still operating on our Safer Together basic guidelines, which means that right now for our expedition company, we are requiring our crew and guests to be vaccinated for 2022 departures. So if you are booking this for a 2022 departure right now, that is in place. We do still have the opportunity for social distancing on our ships. One great thing about an expedition ship, these are smaller ships, which means there are less capacity on these ships. The one that is doing this only will hold up to 130 passengers. So you are not going to be with 5,000 of your closest friends on these itineraries. We would not be able to bring the ships in if they were larger than that. There is so much open deck space for viewing because we are doing that for expedition that you will have plenty of room for social distancing. We make sure we're upkeeping our cleaning and crew testing and practices. And there is always a medical team on board our ships when you're traveling in the expedition because some of these areas, it might not be feasible to get to a local doctor. So we make sure we have them traveling with us on board. The ship that you would be taking on this itinerary is the MS Spitsbergen. This ship was named after the largest island in the Svalbard archipelago, which is Spitsbergen, and it was obviously our first expedition back in 1897, but it was completely refurbished in 2016, and it really does reflect a wonderful Scandinavian design, clean lines throughout, and as you can see from the small ship map that I have on here, you have everything you need on board, your hot tubs, your sauna, the gym, you have three restaurants to pick from with an explorer lounge bar, science center, reception shop, observation deck. The expedition launch is on a lower deck, so you are not climbing up and down. It is on water level, and we have the medical center on board as well. The observation decks are on top and in the front of the ship, <coughs> and as you can see from these, you can see just kind of a little bit of an idea when you're looking at the Explorer lounges and bars, even though they are indoors, we try to make sure you are surrounded by windows. So you're able to take the outside nature and still have that inside, but you wanna be on deck as well. And we have the outdoor decks to pick from. Onboard dining, so you have the Explorer lounge, you have the Panorama bar, you have the Alana restaurant and the Torga restaurant. And these are different opportunities for the, you guys to dine in. The cuisine is quite nice. Um, you are having breakfast, lunch, dinner, an early riser snack, an afternoon treat. You know, all of these are incorporated into your travel package, including, you know, if you wanted to glass of wine with lunch and dinner, that is always included in house beer and soda and mineral water. The only time you're is not included is if you're up at night and you wanted a cocktail in the lounge at night, then of course you would have that as an additional cost. Your staterooms in these ships are really well appointed and they are purpose built for expedition. So although you are not having, you know, that butler service and crystal staircases, you're having clean Scandinavian lines, you're having room for your equipment and things you need. And of course, they're very cozy and comfortable. So they fit whether we are in West Africa in the Caribbean or we're in an Arctic area and they have that Scandinavian design to reflect that Spitsbergen atmosphere. You have different opportunities to choose from. So you have everything from a polar inside to a polar outside, which is a window, Arctic Superior, and of course the Expedition Suites. And if you work with your travel advisor, they'll be able to work with you to pick and choose which one would be the right fit for you. And of course, 
the bigger part about expedition is connecting with that inner explorer within you and just knowing you're out there, knowing you're going to be doing things that you might not have ordinarily done. You're going to be experiencing this area of West Africa in a different way. So have you been to Africa previously? Maybe you did a Southern African land safari and now you're looking to go back and do something a little extensive and different. And this gives us the opportunity to explore the areas of West Africa and those out islands and still get a chance to see everything with comfortable accommodations, with knowing that you're with a, you know, a professional expedition team and that you have all your questions to be answered while you're out there. So if you're booking, I personally will be on the very first sailing in November, but you can always join and book to be on there with us. But any of the dates that you're choosing would be fantastic. We always would love to see you on board any of our ships. And with our cruise line, of course, you do have your Wi-Fi included. We have, you know, all of your meals, your use of our equipment. If you're going kayaking, we're going to have, you know, all those things for you. And you're going to have all the things you need. The only thing we tell you to bring is your clothing, which we always give you a what to pack and your photography equipment. We do have a small area gift shop, but it may not have as extensive of photography equipment as you would want to bring if you're an avid photographer. You wanna make sure you have that equipment from home to bring with you. And, you know, of course there are no gratuities expected on our cruise line. It is really not the Norwegian way of life to tip. And we do kind of give that atmosphere throughout our ships. So if you guys did want to leave something for the crew, it is at your discretion, but there will not be anything automatically added to your bill. So really, once you book everything and your advisor is getting everything you need, there's going to be very little that you need to do in addition to that. There will always be optional excursions added on if you wanted to do more than what is included. And those will always be bookable on board should you choose to do those. But there is an excursion or landing included at every single stop. So you will always have the activity that we have planned included for you. So you don't have to worry about adding on to those as well. So I'd love an opportunity to open up for questions before we go to our you know, contact slide and our welcome screen. And I hope this is really great information for you. I hope you're even almost excited as I am about this itinerary. We'd love to have you guys answer any questions that you have live. And of course, if you don't have any live right now and you think of one later, please do reach out to your travel advisor as well. So Kelly, I don't see any questions in here yet, but I do want to reiterate how exciting this itinerary is. I, I just find it fascinating. So I thank you so much for the great information. And um, anybody who is joining today, if you have additional questions, uh, I will be... Um, available by email. And Kelly, I think you're going to be putting up a slide with our phone number. So people can reach us at the agency. You can talk to your travel professional here at Travel Leaders. And we want to be able to help you get on these expedition cruises. It looks fascinating. And also, please keep in mind that if you're watching this recording prior to November 30th, we do have a Black Friday promotion going on where these itineraries will be up to 35% off for this specific destination. And if there's any other destination, of course, that you wanted to do an expedition with us at, there are some that are up to 50% off. So we have a um, telephone number up on your screen. And I just wanted to go back really quickly before we finish. I'm gonna slide up here to this very first map for a moment. And I just wanted to remember to remind everyone that when you're taking this trip with us, the one thing I didn't mention is you are touching five countries. That is a big deal for us, but it's a great deal for you guys, because when you think about going to some of these continents that are so vast and getting an opportunity, a lot of times on the land trips, you do only get an opportunity to see one or two. This is bringing you to five. So it is a really great opportunity, not only to go to West Africa, to, but to be able to come home and say, yes, I've already been to 
five of these countries in that area. So super important for us to talk about because it's something I just didn't, I didn't realize to mention earlier. And again, any questions, please shoot them in. If not, I want to say thank you. I will go back to that last slide. Well, thank you, Kelly. Such great information. Very excited about it. And you can reach out to any of us through Facebook. You can contact your travel leaders, travel uh, advisor, or call the number 763-231-8870. And I love your images, by the way, Kelly. Just beautiful. We are just so excited. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you. And we will um, finish up for now. Thanks everybody and have a great afternoon.